Although the policy of the last three Fallout games has been a very heavy choice-based story focus, albeit Fallout 76 is still working there in some ways, the Fallout series wasn't always like this. Yes, there was always a small amount of freedom to what the player could choose, and if you wanted to, you could perceive failure as an ending. However, for the most part, there's one solid ending that the developers could build the rest of the canon story off. Rather than completely ignoring the previous games because you can't decide what faction won. The events of Fallout 1, 2 and to a certain degree Fallout 3 are so set in stone and at least in 1 and 2's case happened a very long time ago relative to where we've progressed in the Fallout timeline. Playing these games almost feels like reading a Fallout history book. So I thought, what about some alternate history in Fallout? What better place to start than the first game, with something the game prompts with one of the failure options? What if in Fallout, the Master won? Quick recap, Mariposa military base. Captain Roger Maxson was stationed there before the war. He and the rest of the soldiers there found out the scientists were using the forced evolutionary virus on human test subjects. They killed the scientists, deserted the military, and after the bombs fell, left for the Lost Hills bunker where they would establish the Brotherhood of Steel. Years later, Harold, the same one from Fallout 3, would lead an expedition to Mariposa, where he would develop that plant-like growth. Another member of the expedition, Richard Gray, would fall into an FEV vat and after a week of floating in it and the subsequent mutation, he would merge with other people and even a computer, until he came to be known as the Master. He's the main antagonist of Fallout 1, he's been amassing a super mutant army to unleash on the world and convert everyone with FEV. Now that the history lesson is over, how would this alternate history play out? For the setup, I'm going to assume that the story of Fallout 1 plays out as normal, with the Vault Dweller being sent to acquire a new water chip for Vault 13. They go to Shady Sands, Vault 15, the Hub, and eventually end up in Necropolis, where they find the replacement chip. Then the next journey begins, to eliminate the source of the super mutant threat. Where I would choose for this universe to differ is when the Vault Dweller finds their way into the Cathedral, the hiding place of the Master. The Vault Dweller could be captured any time from entering the Cathedral to entering the Master's chamber in the LA Vault underneath. Most likely they get jumped by an invisible Nightkin. The important part is they get captured, so it could also happen through talking to Harry in the Necropolis. It's important that the Vault Dweller gets captured so that the location of Vault 13 is revealed to the Unity. This is one of the fail screens in Fallout, where you can get the player turned into a super mutant and help with the siege of Vault 13. This would be the best scenario for the Master. While it's shown that many of the Vault residents are killed during the siege, we have to assume that many are indeed captured and being radiation-free humans, or prime normals, they're turned into cognitively superior super mutants. Although only about 10% would survive the transformation process, they would be smarter than the normal super mutants. Vault 13 would also be yet another base for the Master's army. After this point, the Master would begin openly conquering communities and converting the population into super mutants. After a month, the smaller communities such as Junktown and Shady Sands would likely have been wiped out by the Master's army, obviously helped by Vault 13's use as a forward base. The larger communities like the Hub and the scattered survivors of the LA Boneyard may be able to mount a defense. After two months, the Brotherhood, while previously held back by the Elders, believing the mutant threat to be over-exaggerated, would be forced to step in. They would really be the only faction that could properly fight the Master's army. By that point, LA may have already fallen, given the Master's headquarters is in LA, leaving the Hub as the main settlement for the Brotherhood to protect, especially considering the Brotherhood relies on trading with the Hub to survive. The Brotherhood, while small in number, could effectively repel attacks against the Master's army. 
they really would only have to split their forces between two points. Potentially the majority would stay defending Lost Hills and any volunteers would defend the hub. Or, sensing the scope of the threat, the whole Brotherhood actually abandons Lost Hills, moving their entire force to the hub in favour of collective safety. I imagine it would become some sort of Destiny Last City-like situation, with all the survivors from around the region heading to the hub for safety. Even some of the more civilised raider gangs like the Khans might join in fighting the Master's army, lest they be left to fend for themselves with super mutants roaming all around the wastes. The weakening of the hub by the Master's army and the lack of an established government in the hub would leave it open to full takeover by the Brotherhood of Steel and most likely induction of many hub citizens into the organisation. Increasing the Brotherhood's size exponentially and militarizing the hub. As the Master's army expanded northwards, as they eventually would, they would come into contact with the settlements of Fallout 2. The settlements featured in Fallout 2 would be much smaller at this time, most of them would fall to the Master's army by the fifth month. The only settlements that could potentially hold out are San Francisco, being a large city and populated largely by the descendants of Chinese submariners, they should have better training and equipment. And Vault City, a very technologically advanced city originating from Vault 8. The same situation with the hub would happen to Vault City, with survivors around the region flocking to it for safety. By the 8th month, San Francisco would be on its last legs, but the Master's Army should also be feeling the losses from its continued battle with San Francisco, Vault City, and the Hub. The mutants would have to stop expanding so much, and by this point, if they hadn't already, would most likely see the need for human farming. The Master may also resort to throwing every wasteland creature in the FEV vats. Apart from super mutants evolving from humans, we know of two other creatures that were also created. The centaurs, made from a mixture of humans, dogs, and some other creatures, and the floaters, mutated flatworms. These creatures were still loyal to their FEV brethren, so it's safe to assume that any other mutated creatures would be too. Even with the 10% success rate, the master could still bolster his forces incredibly. Any wasteland cave is likely to be crawling with rad scorpions, a creature that I'm sure would turn into pure nightmare fuel upon the exposure of them to FEV. If the Unity was to take these smarter approaches to expanding its forces, it could easily turn the tide of war in its favour. With their expanded forces, the Master's army could take Vault City by the 11th month. The auto turrets would still cut down many mutants, but with the expanded force of the evolved wasteland creatures, their defences could only last so long, leaving the hub as the last surviving settlement in all of New California. I see this ending two ways. The hub, while now a full brotherhood city, just couldn't withstand the now almost completely focused force of the Master's army. With around 10% of all the creatures that once lived in New California now part of it. The hub could last maybe a month after the fall of Vault City, if we are considering the time for the main force of the Master's Army to travel back down south and organise a full assault against the hub. The final battle for the hub would be very hard for the Master's Army, and knowing the fate of Prisoners of the Unity, surrender wouldn't be an option for the Brotherhood. In the end, it would be a mutant victory, while very costly for the mutants, and with little human prisoners, it was a somewhat hollow victory, but it would mean that the last settlement in California, and possibly one of the most advanced societies left in the whole of America, was defeated by the Unity. After which the Unity would have very little resistance taking over the entire country, except maybe from the Enclave, but they wouldn't be strong enough to erase the threat. The main problem the Unity would run into would be the limitation of only having one source of FEV something I'm sure the Master could eventually solve. If we rewind a little bit before the Unity has taken over New California, for the hopeful, there may be one other outcome. As the mutant army conquered and assimilated their way through New California, the eyes of invisible watchers took notice. 
It's hard to say what prompted this. Maybe it was the attack on Vault City, maybe it was the mutant army getting a little too close to a certain oil tanker docked in San Francisco, or maybe they were just always watching. Nevertheless, these watches represent the last hope for the wasteland. It is in fact the remnant of the American government sitting on an oil rig off the Californian coast, the Enclave. While we know that by Fallout 2 they have taken a policy of isolation and hostility to the mainland, 80 years earlier in Fallout 1, they could be a completely different Enclave. The Enclave may care about stopping the Master's army because they sincerely want to stop the destruction it's causing, or maybe they just want to stop the mutants before they become a proper threat to the Enclave. Either way, this means war. At this point in the timeline, the Enclave would not have developed the advanced power armor. They would still be making use of the higher end X01 power armor, like the one seen in Fallout 4 as opposed to the earlier models seen in Fallout 76. The Enclave would also have quite a few T51 suits. The first order of business would most likely be setting up a beachhead on the mainland. Navarro of course would be the perfect base. They used it in Fallout 2, so we can assume they would use it in this situation. Navarro is quite important for refueling the vertebrates the Enclave uses. Navarro would allow the Enclave to easily deploy reconnaissance teams to properly assess the danger of the Master's army. The first step would be acquiring a mutant body to determine the cause of such mutation. The Enclave should be able to conclude the mutation is a result of the FEV. They also have records of the Mariposa military base, so they should be quick to figure out that is the origin of the mutants. Now we approach the end game. The Enclave would have to strike Mariposa and destroy it before they could start exterminating the Master's army. It's hard to tell how heavily guarded Mariposa would actually be. It's possible the Master would overexpand his forces, leaving Mariposa exposed. Although, Mariposa is basically the most valuable asset to the Master, and the Brotherhood still exists not too far from it. Because I think it would be cool to see, we'll say Mariposa is heavily guarded by all the monstrosities that the FEV could create. The Enclave's initial thought would be to drop in with vertebrates and lace the complex with explosives, yet there's a decent chance some of the many mutants could shoot them out of the sky or during their landing with heavy weapons. There's also the fact that the entirety of the base is underground, therefore the vertebrates wouldn't provide that much strategic advantage. So the Enclave would be forced to request the help of the Brotherhood of Steel. The Brotherhood at first might be skeptical of this organization claiming to be the Old World Government, yet I doubt the current members of the Brotherhood share the sentiment of the original members of hating the government. The Brotherhood would clearly see this as their best option. At this point, the mutants still shouldn't know about the Enclave, and this attack should be very unexpected. The Brotherhood could bring its best soldiers with the Enclave in a risky maneuver leaving minimal defenses at the hub. The plan of attack would be to land the troops in vertebrates on top of the base, giving them superior firing positions and utilizing any vertebrate gunships for air support. Once the outside is clear, the majority of the attack force could be flown down to the entrance where they would storm the base. The concept of excessive force probably wouldn't apply here. I can't imagine there would be any moment when the soldier's gatling lasers aren't spinning. It would be a hard, costly fight, but I'm sure the Enclave and Brotherhood would make it to the vats. I'm sure both groups would continue their mission in planting explosives everywhere. Although I wouldn't be surprised if one Enclave soldier had a secret order to obtain a sample of the FEV. Nevertheless, the base would be destroyed, and it would still be a long road ahead before they could properly defeat the Master. But his production of super mutants would be halted, at least for now. This ending may be better in the long term for humanity as the Enclave and the Brotherhood have now come out of their isolation and may build a better future together. I hope you enjoyed that look into alternate Fallout history. I thought this was a really interesting outcome that could completely change everything in the Wasteland and I had to explore it. 
As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.